from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, October 14th. So the moon is in Pisces here all day. And of course the moon in Pisces means we're kind of chill. We're kind of living in la la land. We're focused on what needs to end, what we're bringing a closure to. And at the same time, we're trying to renew and refresh our soul and our spirit. So again, Pisces energy represented by two fish, one building something, one going right behind and totally destroying it. This is the cycle. This is the chapter of destruction and rebirth and of course because we're in an ending in a closure chapter in series with multitude of different layers again different planets in ending phases this is going to bring an end to the emotional chapter that we have definitely felt the ups and downs about so there are 11 different aspects taking place here today nine of them are going to involve the moon the moon in this Pisces energy going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. So again, we're kind of sitting in our fears. We're kind of sitting in our insecurities. But at the same time, we get overwhelmed with all of that. And then we immediately just kind of moved into this dazed and confused type of situation and circumstance. The Pisces energy is the escape artist of the Zodiac. We really don't want to deal with reality. We have have Chiron, the wounded healer, really helping us to develop this new version of self. But while we're anchoring in this new version of self, we have to be very aware of the parts of the old version of self that still need a little bit of work, a little bit of healing, a little bit of growth. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with the sun and the sun, of course, in the later degrees now of this Libra energy. Anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment a new emotional awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire, and what we have to do to actually get it. So the moon in Pisces, again, very dreamy, very creative, very imaginative, very intuitive. The sun, on the other hand, shining a bright light in this Libra energy, hella indecisive. We're flip flopping back and forth. We lose ourselves in La La Land. Then we bring ourselves back to reality. Then it's too heavy. It's too extreme. Then we check out once again. The moon is going to make an awkward interaction with Mars, Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in cancer energy, not feeling so hot. He can't take direct, immediate action on whether, whatever it is that he chooses to align with, chooses to really do and pursue. And of course, in this cancer energy, we're kind of on the defense. We're in preservation mode. There's a lot of restlessness coming up, a lot of agitation. A lot of that is because, again, yesterday we did kind of kick off this T-square between the sun and Chiron and Mars that is continuing here today. And the moon and Mars definitely in these water energies bringing up all the heavier emotions all of the old not so nice memories again this is a process of acknowledging it integrating it so that we can release it let it go and renew ourselves to start on a brand new emotional cycle the moon is going to make a positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy. And of course, that north node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us towards this new mission, this new goal, this new vision, this new dream that, again, we're actively trying to manifest. It's hard, though, because we're in a closure chapter. So again, a lot of the ideas that we have for our future selves, as soon as we realize what looks good, what feels good, what we actually want to do and pursue, that's the moment that we realize where in our current situation and circumstances, certain people, places and things have got to go. Again, this is a wrap up of this old emotional cycle. The moon interacting with the North Node is putting us in a situation to realize where it is that we have grown where we have healed, where we have evolved to a certain extent, but where there's still a little bit more work to do. 4.16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sun in Libra energy going to get into the boxing ring, fight it out, square off with Mars. This is the T-square that began at the latter part of the day here yesterday. So, of course, a square doesn't feel good. It highlights the tension. It highlights the conflict. It highlights where we're having growing pains. 
course, growing pains aren't fun. And with Mars, the god of war, kind of being stunted in his growth, in his ability to kind of move forward. And again, putting him in a position to kind of hold on to what is worthy, what is valuable enough, what it is that we've already built and created, what we're willing to fight for. Again, preservation mode. So this is definitely going to trigger some ants in our pants. This is going to put us in a situation where we have a hard time sitting where we have a hard time settling, where we have a hard time just realizing where we need to kind of, you know, calm the ants in our pants down. There is going to be an urgency and intensity around wanting to take action, wanting to make moves, wanting to do something that technically speaking, we're not able to do right now. So there's all this excess energy just bouncing around within us like a pinball machine. We don't know what to do with ourselves. We don't have the ability, the options, the opportunity to take action to make moves the way that we would want. And so there is this kind of longing for things to kind of hurry up and kick off. Now, let me just say, when Mars is involved, again, he rules over Aries energy. Aries energy is the beginning of the zodiac wheel. It is our ego self. It is our infant ego self. And tantrums are quite a big deal. We could be sitting in a funk. We could be kind of, you know, in a situation where the ants in our pants, the restlessness is getting the best of us. And that could put us in a situation where we're a little bit childish. We're a little bit, you know, more reactive than we should be, a little bit more on the defense than we need to be. We're hella competitive with Mars. And of course, at this particular point in time, the cancer energy so kind of stuck in the past that there is a resistance towards even wanting to negotiate, wanting to compromise, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. And so, you know, the energy is running high. We're not giving it a healthy outlet to kind of get out of our body. And we're low on patience. We're kind of, you know, in this very tense dynamic. That is what a T-square is. Now, we have to reach a boiling point before the energy starts to dissipate. This is it. So it's important to realize that everybody's on edge. Everybody's projecting their anger, their restlessness outside of themselves. It's important not to kind of put ourselves in a situation to rush through certain, you know, circumstances or decision points. Again, we're in labor season, so no decisions will be made. But we don't want to like hurry the process in an unorganic way. And so, you know, to have the patience to put yourself in a timeout is a huge awareness that many people don't have. Just be aware of yourself, be responsible for your own energy. And again, just kind of pull back the reins and act as the observer. So we sit in this particular funk until about 2 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. The moon in Pisces energy going to come up to bump into team up with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in this Pisces energy. So a conjunction is a reset. There is an ending just as much as there is a beginning. The ending is the funk, the harsh reality checks that we have been given. The let's call it overactive imagination, creating anxieties that don't need to be there. And the poor what was me victimhood mentality. Now, what is beginning is this renewal, this refreshing soul and spiritual energy kicking in to remind us that guess what? Things aren't actually as bad as we're making them out to be, that we do have the ability to, again, change our inner realm, our thoughts, our emotions, our ability to see the forest past the trees, our ability to kind of take a more realistic approach to what we have power and control over here in the present moment to build a brand new foundation and structure for the dreams, the visions that we now have to actually be built upon. So there is this like organization, if you will, of our emotions. And we're starting to lean again, Libra season scales. We're starting to lean out of the funk and lean towards a much more positive outlook. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. We love Pisces and Taurus energy working together because whatever it is that we can dream up, we can actually bring it to life through that Taurus energy. Just a reminder, though, Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is a reflection back, a reflection to where it is that we've built and created certain aspects, circumstances, situations in our lives with routines, relationships, money matters, basically our physical realm that again, we've outgrown, but yet we're having a hard time letting go of. 
Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which kind of screams that we're going to receive an epiphany, some huge insight on where it is that, again, we can kind of shift the way that we've been looking at things, shift the way that we've been feeling towards things and really kind of get a grip on why it is that we're actually blocking ourselves from making the kind of progress that we wish we would have made of this particular juncture point. But again, we're responsible for not kind of having at this particular point because of our resistance to the change, to the transformation that we're currently going through. The moon is then going to semi-square Pluto, the great transformer, who is now direct in Capricorn energy. A semi-square is going to highlight where we're having a little bit of a problem trying to wrap our head or heart around what needs to be done. Of course, Pluto now direct in this Capricorn energy as full systems go on where it is that we need to do one last final clean sweep of the old world that the old version of self that created. Removing old structures, old routines, old people, old places, old things that of course we've outgrown that are no longer contributing to our happiness, to our growth, to our evolvement. From now until November, this is going to be us bossing up, doing what we should have done probably many, many months and moons ago that we have the opportunity to do now to bring a certain ending and closure to our physical realms. But of course, the moon in Pisces, emotionally speaking, we have to find ourselves in a place of acceptance, a place of realizing that again, holding on to the old, especially when it's no longer serving us, especially when it reminds us of, you know, situations gone by, versions of self gone by, we cannot continue to live in a world, in a reality, in a circumstance, that constantly triggers the old version of self to come out to play. This new version of self is now trying to be anchored in, trying to take the lead, trying to be the El Capitano of this particular ship and moving forward. And so we have to take a good look around at our physical realm, the physical circumstances that are still standing. We have to get real and raw and vulnerable with where it is that we have to, again, fast forward our emotions to a place of acceptance so that we can do what needs to be done to remove them. The sun and the moon now coming together again for an aha moment. Now, compared to the aha moment that we had earlier in the day, we would have had an aha moment out of the tension, out of the conflict, out of the frustration. Now, when the moon in Pisces and the sun in Libra come together in a positive interaction, this is going to be like a positive outlook a positive shift in our emotional realm, a positive realization on where it is that we've been fighting ourselves. And if we just got out of our own damn way, we could actually bring the peace, harmony and balance not only back into our inner realm, but into our physical realm as well. This is going to be again, a realization in the most positive of forms and aha moment where creative solutions are now starting to present themselves. At 6.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. In the Scorpio energy, again, major heart activations, major pivot in our heart space. We're being empowered to realize what it is that makes us happy, what brings us a sense of safety, security, happiness, joy, and pleasure. We're realizing what it is that we actually want to do, what we actually want to pursue, what we're actually passionate about, where there's actual inspiration and motivation taking over. And just as we realize what it is that we want to do, we realize what needs to be done in order to set ourselves free from a lot of the relationship dynamics, a lot of the situations and circumstances that, again, have been very limiting, that haven't been contributing to our overall safety, security, happiness and joy. We have Venus coming into a direct opposition, sitting across the table from Uranus, the great awakener, who, of course, is retrograde in Taurus energy. So just a reminder, we had Venus and Uranus pop off with their conjunction back in May. And if you think about it in the way of like a full moon and how the moon sits across from the sun, there's an opposition there that gives us a full moon energy, that there is new information, a full illumination coming forth. This opposition is kind of that in the Venus and Uranus cycle. So we had a conjunction back in May, May 19th specifically. We had this aha moment on what we needed to do, what we wanted to grow, what we wanted to pursue, what needed to end, what needed to die. That's what a conjunction is. It's an ending just as much as it is a beginning. Where here Venus has gone through, you know, the majority of the, well, the half of the zodiac wheel anyways, and the Taurus energy, of course, sits across the street from the Scorpio energy. And here we are at a halfway point. Now, does an opposition feel good? No, not supposed to. 
are we supposed to, you know, have some sort of illumination in the most positive of light of what it is that we have to do? Nope, not with an opposition. An opposition is going to show us where it is that we're at odds with ourselves between our heart and our head where it is that we're at odds with other people in our relationship dynamics, there's some sort of power struggle going on. And we have to figure out how to balance, how to compromise, how to negotiate between these two planetary energies. So let's just talk about the fact, first of all, huge heart activations. If you haven't listened to the Ascension symptoms for this week, I'm going to recommend that you do so. You're going to want to know why your heart starts acting a fool. You're going to want to know why you probably feel this, you know, pressure on your chest, on your heart space. You're also going to want to realize that Uranus brings in a whole lot of electricity into our physical form and jacks up our central nervous system. Now, on the other kind of, you know, spectrum of things outside of the Ascension symptoms that we can expect with this particular pop off, Uranus brings the unexpected and so there could be an unexpected event that pops off that puts into perfect perspective what needs to stay what needs to go there could be an unexpected change of heart take place suddenly just things are starting to connect the dots the puzzle pieces are clicking together and you realize oh I actually don't feel that way anymore or I don't feel passionate about that anymore or I no longer have the want need or desire to fight for this particular outcome anymore something is going to happen to kind of you know catch us off guard our feelings what we're kind of you know focused on it could be between people in our lives Venus of course all about relationships we could find that we are being attracted to a certain topic and theme for us to research and explore there's some sort of aha moment some sort of surprise coming out of the woodwork here today likely through a not so good situation because again opposition is tension this is going to destabilize us. This is going to shake us up. This is going to wake us up. This is going to put us in a situation where we feel anxious, where we feel the restlessness, where we feel unstable. This is, and because Uranus is involved, maybe we're triggering some sort of rebellion. Maybe there's this rebellious streak that we've been biting our tongue about throughout Libra season, because again, nobody wants to rock the boat, but we are coming to the end of this Mercury Again, now in Scorpio energy, we're more apt to kind of speak out on the things that we were hesitant to speak out about previous to this. There's this rebellious energy that we're tired of playing it small. We're tired of staying silent. We're tired of having to filter our thoughts, our ideas, our feelings. And so, you know, the want, need and desire for us to be comfortable, for us to be happy, for us to find some sort of peace in our lives. Of course, that's there. But right now, there are certain aspects, topics and themes alive and well in our lives because we have done nothing about them that are creating a space for none of these things to happen. There are people, places and things, there are circumstances that the old version of self had built and created that are, you know, triggering us not feeling safe and secure, us triggering, not feeling connected to the people, to the world around us. And so we have to get real about what it is that we are allowing to continue that essentially we have prayers that we're, you know, focused on like, oh, I just hope and pray that everything's going to get better. Well, now we actually have to take action in order for it to actually be better. And so this particular energy, as uncomfortable as it is, is going to highlight for us where it is that there is a part of us that has this desire to be free from a lot of the things that we were overly attached and connected to. And there's also a part of us that is scared shitless to let certain people, places and things go. And so, again, there's a little bit of this obsession coming out with holding on to the old, because, again, we just want everything to be, you know, familiar and predictable. But yet we're still praying for sudden change to come in, to take over, to make our lives better. So there is going to be, I'm going to say, a lot of tension a lot of anxiety, a lot of restlessness, a lot of heart activations coming into play here with this particular transit in order for us to wake up, see where it is that, again, we've been blocking the process, that we have the ability to make major changes that we are currently just sitting back and hoping kind of, you know, make themselves. It is up to us when you bring your creator abilities online and you want to co-create with the collective, with the cosmos, with the universe, you have to be accountable and responsible for doing your part. You can't just sit back and hope and wish and pray that the people that you wish would, you know, be cut out of your life, that they just do it themselves. 
there is a point where you have to use your voice. You have to boss up and advocate for your own damn happiness. And this is definitely going to highlight where it is that you got to shit or get off the pot, where you either got to open up your mouth, say something about the changes that you need to see or work on yourself in order to be able to accept the aspects in your life that you're not willing to change. And so, again, probably not going to feel good, but absolutely necessary, especially as we're approaching this full moon in Aries, that we have these uncomfortable thoughts and feelings, that we have these tension filled oppositions in order to bring us to a breaking point, to a boiling point, because as humans, that's the only time that we actually seem to change. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Pisces energy, making a very awkward interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. that of course is in Scorpio energy. Now, if you haven't listened to that particular astro forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so again, get your October energy guide out, really capture what's going on for you. There has been a major shift in our mood, in our attitude, in our focus, in our mental plane, in our dialogue. We are blending our intuition with our intellect. There are going to be realizations that we are going to have through this particular transit that are totally going to change the game. So although they are both in water energies, and again, usually water is very cleansing and purifying water, then, you know, refreshes us and renews us in our emotions and our soul and our spirit. This isn't the most favorable aspect. It's not the most horrible one, but it's not the most favorable, which means that The moon in Pisces bringing up a lot of the fears, doubts, insecurities, pain and trauma of the past. Mercury now in the Scorpio energy is able to look at it through a lens that helps us to understand the deep psychological programming, the conditioning, the choices that our old version of self had made based off of that particular narrative, that particular memory, that particular emotion, that particular reaction to a circumstance that happened, you know, last week, last month, last year, 10 years ago, doesn't matter. Mercury's now in the mind state and the Scorpio energy to get to the truth, to get to the bottom of the matter, to understand where a major change, a major transformation needs to happen in the way that we remember things, in the way that we reflect back on things, in the way that we allow the old narrative of old versions of self and old people in the old version of self's life to still have power and control over our mind, over our decisions, over our choice points in the present moment, in the here and now. So our heart and our head, they're trying to get on the same page. That is the same, you know, the, the element of water. They're working with water, but water can be very stormy as well. Water can be very uh, emotionally drowning as well. Water can definitely mess some things up. And right now we're just trying to focus on where it is that we're holding on to old narratives, old beliefs, old perspectives, old memories that again, not serving this new version of self very well.